Hi everyone, my name is Miss Connolly. I started making videos for my own students and I wanted to make sure I could teach as many students as possible. And this one is another special one for the fourth graders at my school. Can't wait to see you next year. Um, so let's get started. If you have any questions, teachers, students, parents, anyone, um, Connolly Math at home at gmail.com. And we are going to be working with division again today. So I made a video already about multiplying up with groups of the divisor. So that was the one strategy that we tackled. I also showed you how I would model that on the area model. Today, we're going to be thinking about dividing one di or four digit by one digit. And we're going to be thinking about another strategy where we break up the dividend, which is this number here. And the way that we're going to break up the dividend is by thinking about groups of the divisor. Okay, I'll show you what's going on with the area model as well, just so you can make the connection with multiplication, you can make the connection with multiplying up, all the connections. Okay, so we always want to give our, our um, division situation a story problem context. So again, I'll, I do a lot of oranges and boxes and boxes of oranges and oranges into boxes just so we can think about what's going on with something consistent. So again, we have 1,248 oranges. I want to split them into equal groups. I'm going to split them into six equal crates um, with the same number of oranges in each crate. And my goal is to find out how many are in each crate. Okay, so I chose these numbers to present the strategy to you because sometimes we decide, well not sometimes, usually we should be deciding what strategy to use based on the numbers that are given to us. And 1,248 is screaming at me to break it up into groups of the divisor. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to think about these oranges and we're going to think about multiples of six. Okay, and you know multiples of six would be the numbers that we count by when we say six, or so when, the numbers that we say when we count by six, six, twelve, 18, 24, uh, 30, 36, 42, 48, all of those numbers, okay? So what I'm thinking about is I see that I can split up 1,248 oranges into two different groups to make the division easy for myself, okay? So what I want us to think about is what we see here. I have 1,248 oranges. I know that 1,200 is a multiple of six. I know that this is something that's divisible by six. And I also know that that's something that I can think about mentally, okay? So what's happening down here on the area model is I just took out 1,200 oranges, okay? So I'm gonna um, keep track of this down here. So 1,200 oranges, I'm going to think about putting into the six crates the first time. And what am I left with? Because my area inside has to stay the same, okay? You're used to seeing the area model with, the, with multiplication. I'm showing you what it looks like with division. Our goal now is to find out what this dimension would be. So if I have 1,200 oranges and I split them into six equal groups, what, how many would I put in each of the six crates? That's what this number would represent here. Then, and you can put parentheses here, then we're thinking about, well, I know I can do that, and how many oranges are still left to split up, and I see there's 48 oranges left to distribute equally into six crates. So over here, we're thinking about the length of this piece of six. What is the width? And we're gonna find our quotient here, okay? So let's think about this down here. I split this into six crates. And I know 1,200 oranges are going to be fitting in this space here. So how many oranges would be in each of those six crates? You know how to think about this as multiplication. So six times what is 1,200? And what we would say, and you know, it's 200 
Oranges would go in each crate, so 200, 400, 600, 800, 1,000, 1,200. Okay, so I hope you're seeing the connection between how I'm representing this on the area model, and you don't have to draw these lines across. I just wanted to show you what was going on. Um, when we're notating the strategy, you can write 200 underneath, and then the plus sign. And we can think about now if this piece of the area model had 48 oranges, and I had to split them into six crates, what would the length or the width of this piece be every single time? How many oranges go in each crate? And you're saying, I know, I know, I know, because you know 48 divided by six because you know six times what is 48. So we know that there would be eight oranges in each crate, okay? so. How many total oranges did, went in each of the six crates? Well, first we put 200 in each, then we put eight in each crate, and that left us with 208 oranges. And you see that answer here. You see how I got to it there in both ways of representing the strategy. And so our final answer, our quotient, was the missing dimension or what we got when we split the dividend into groups of the divisor. I picked these numbers. I picked what I split it into because I knew that I could divide it by six. I was using what I knew about multiples of six. So what is our answer? 208. Okay? So this, I chose this strategy for these numbers because they were screaming 1,200 divided by six. It was screaming 48 divided by six. That's something I know. So I decided to split the dividend into groups of the divisor. I just want to say though, that that's not the only way that we could have split up um, 1,248. So, and we're going to get into this in the next problem in depth. We could have thought about it I could have said, well, I know I see 600 divided by 6. And I know that my space inside has to represent 1,248. Okay? And then I said to myself, well, I think then I can do another group of 600 divided by 6. And remember, when I'm thinking about the area model, the space inside has to be 1,248. So far, I've taken care of uh, 1,200 oranges. You see 600 oranges here divided into six equal groups. 600 oranges here divided into six equal groups. That means I've used 1,200 oranges so far. What's left? 48 divided into six equal groups. Okay, so we don't have to go to the 1,200 right away. You can think about, I know that 600 divided by 6 is 100. I know that 600 divided by 6 is another 100. And I know 48 divided by 6 is 8, which is 208. And we would see that how we would represent it on the area model here. Okay? So, there's several different ways that you can break up a dividend into groups of the divisor. But remember, I am thinking about multiples of my divisor. This number here is called the divisor. I want The only way that I'm splitting up these numbers is by um, multiples of the divisor. So we break up the dividend into multiples of the divisor, groups of the divisor, and that's how we use the strategy efficiently. Now, you're probably thinking as I'm erasing that what if there's a remainder? Well, that's something we'll talk about when you're in my fifth grade classroom using this strategy with a remainder, okay? So something to look forward to. So now we are gonna look at oranges and crates again, and we're gonna think about 1,352 divided by four. So I have 1,300, sorry, 32, need to get my eyes checked, 1,332 oranges, and I'm gonna split them equally between four crates. And I want to think about the number in each crate. Okay, again, I see some stuff going on that makes me think I have groups of 
um, the divisor in 1,332 1, oranges. So let's get to splitting it up. All right, um, I'm going to think about, um, I see, when I think about multiples of 4, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32. Okay, so I see a 32 there, so that's cool. Um, I also think about when I said 4, 8, 12. And so I'm thinking, well, I have 1,332 oranges. Could I take out 1,200 oranges and split them between the four crates first? Is there a relationship here between 4 and 1,200? There is, and so that's why I'm deciding, and I'm going to make my area model small down here and just model what's going on. That's how I'm deciding how much to take out because there's a relationship here before, between 4 and 1,200, and I know that if I take 1,200 and divide it by 4, then I have 300 oranges in each of the four crates. So I'm taking out 1,200 oranges. I know my whole area model has to represent 1,332, but I'm doing this piece first, okay? So I know so far there's 300 oranges in each crate. What's left is 132 oranges to be distributed into the four different crates. So then you think to yourself again, is there another way that I can you start with 132 oranges now and take out some groups of the divisor? I think you're seeing it. I love 104, the relationship between 104, four quarters. I just love it. So anyways, if I take out, if I split up the dividend into groups of the divisor, I've taken out 1,200, I'm going to do a group of 100 oranges and split them between the four crates. And so how many oranges do I put into each of the four crates? 25 oranges goes into each of the four crates. And then I see what I have left. I have left 32 oranges and I need to put them in each of four crates. So. 32, the length here is four. I know the width has to be eight. Okay, so when we combine these together, 300 is how much I put in each crate first. Then I put 25 oranges in each crate, and then I put eight oranges in each crate, and that equals 333 oranges in each crate. Okay, so that's one way to break up by groups of the divisor, but you might be at home saying, wait a minute, I see another way. Well, that's what's beautiful about math and what's beautiful about breaking up groups of the, um, breaking up the dividend into groups of the divisor is we can do it so many different ways, okay? So I'm gonna leave the area model alone for this just so I can show you there's more ways to break up the dividend, um, but you should be visualizing that area model as you work. You might wanna draw if it's helpful. Okay, so last time I went ahead and took out 1,200 oranges. I made that group of the dividend, or that group of the divisor, okay? But I'm going to split up the dividend a different way. This time, I'm going to say, I'm going to start with 1,000 oranges. And I have a relationship between, there's a relationship here, there's a group, four goes into 100 equally, okay? So when we're thinking about how many oranges am I putting into each crate, if I start with 1,000 oranges, I'm putting 250 into each crate. So there was that relationship between four and 100. Now we see it with four and 1,000, okay? Then I'm thinking about how much do I have left. So I took out 1,000, so I'm still thinking about 332. So maybe I want to think about 300 divided by 4. And I know that 300 um, is a group of the divisor because 
I know that four times 25 is 100. So that means four times 50 is 200. And that means four times 75 is 300. So I know if I take out 300 oranges and split them into four equal groups, I have 75 oranges, okay? And then I say I've done 1,000, I've done 300, and now I'm down to 32 oranges. I'm splitting them equally between the four crates. So how many do I put in this time? I put in eight oranges this time. And again, you see that we have 333 oranges in each crate, okay? And that's still not the only way that we could split up these numbers, okay? You might have to start with 800. Let's see if it, well, let me do it this way. Okay, you might say, well, I know that I can start with 800 oranges and split that into four equal groups, okay? So then we have 200 in each group. Then I'm keeping track of how much I have left, so I've taken out 800. That means I have 532 left. So I'm gonna go ahead and take out a group of 400 oranges because that's something that I know how to do. Okay, so we have 800 divided by four is 200 plus the 400 divided by four is 100. So I've done 1,200 so far. And now I know that I can do 100 divided by four to get to 1,300. And then I always run out of room when I do this strategy, 32 divided by four. And I know that I can put eight oranges in each crate if I had 32. So the point is, when you're looking at numbers, when you're dividing, you want to ask yourself, do, does this equation lend itself to me breaking up the dividend into groups of the divisor? And sometimes it's right there in front of you and you see it and you're like, yes, this is the strategy I should be using. And sometimes, it happens where we don't see it right away and we might want to use multiplying up with groups of the divisor and that's okay. But what our goal is right now is that you explore more than one strategy because you have a math tool belt and we want it to be really big. We want you to be able to say, well, I have this strategy in my tool belt. I have this strategy in my tool belt and you get to pick and choose which one you want to use and when you want to use it so that you can get the job done. Okay, so I'm gonna give you some to try on your own. What I want for you to do is try this strategy. I want you to try breaking up the dividend into groups of the divisor, okay? If it's helpful for you to draw the area model and keep track of what's left of the dividend, make sure you do that, okay? It's there to help you. It's a representation you're familiar with from multiplying. Now, if you want to check, and this goes for any of the operations, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, if you want to double check your answer, you're going to try a different strategy and compare. Did you get the same quotient? Okay, that's one way to double check your work. And that's why having all those tools in your tool belt is really important. So, what are you going to try at home? 2,105 divided by 5. Okay, I want you thinking, is there a relationship with five and this dividend? Could you pull out some of this dividend, some of those oranges into groups of the divisor that you're familiar with? Probably, okay. We have 1,815 divided by three, okay? And we have 2,177 divided by seven. So I want you thinking about, is there a way to break up the dividend into groups of the divisor? You saw how I was notating it with the parentheses and keeping track down the paper. And you also saw that the area model can help you. Okay. So give it a try. Bye.